So how do I design group work when I'm teaching an online course? So the framework that you see on the screen helps me design group work in my online courses. It's a well-known uh, backward design process by Wiggins and McTie. This can frame the instructional design by beginning with the end in mind. So I start with identifying the desired results, then I determine acceptable evidence, I plan for the learning experiences and instruction with attention to communications, and I make pre-instructional decisions about the group work. So let me tell you about this process. Now, while it's described as a linear sequence, it, it really isn't. It's iterative and can be ongoing throughout the course. So I try to do as much of the design before the course starts, but I also make changes and adapt as I'm teaching the course based on the individual student needs. So starting with the desired results. In this case, I look at the learning outcomes of the course and I try to determine um, when I will have group work in meeting those particular learning outcomes. So it's important to establish those learning outcomes right from the beginning and establish the learning outcomes from an individual as well as a group perspective. So I include these learning outcomes in the syllabus if I can. Then I look at the acceptable evidence. So if I have a learning outcome and let's say um, my learning outcome or the desired result you know, the students are creating something as a group. So in an education course, maybe they're creating a unit plan as a group. Then I consider what would be the acceptable evidence of learning. So how will I assess that particular unit plan that they've now created as a group? So I provide criteria for the success. So for example, I might create a rubric that assesses that unit plan. And so in that rubric, I would also include criteria about working together as a group. So if the learning outcome is that they are co-designing this unit plan together as part of a knowledge building community, then what would be the indicators of that? So I might have indicators um, that describe how they might work together as a knowledge building community. So the indicator might indicate demonstrates deep and proficient understanding of all topics and takes a meaningful role as a designer in fostering idea diversity and a knowledge building community. Or I might indicate um, demonstrate skillful collaboration with peers and continually contributes as a team member. And I also explain to the students that skillful collaboration and continually contributing doesn't mean just getting along with the group and getting along doesn't um, equate to an excellent product in the end. Instead, um, skillful collaboration might mean negotiation. It might mean um, working through the challenges that will occur when working with a group. Planning the learning experiences and the instruction would be next. And so I look at the, both the asynchronous as well as synchronous opportunities that we have in an online course for the learning and determine um, how I will foster that group work during those situations. So for example, in the synchronous sessions, so meeting in uh, the web conferencing system, I might set up breakout rooms for the groups to meet. It might be um, at the beginning of the group project or group assignment where they might be working in the breakout room and I might um, circulate and go into each of the breakout rooms and have conversations with the students. Similarly, in the asynchronous format, so using our learning management system, I might set up discussion forums for the students so, so that they can um, provide weekly check-ins and summaries of how their group is working together or post drafts. So for example, in the unit plan, they might post a draft in the discussion forum so that I can review and provide instructor feedback, or I might um, create peer opportunities where they're providing peer feedback to each other. And finally, I make more pre-instructional decisions. 
So such as creating a group contract might be a pre-instructional decision. I might determine what kind of template might I provide for a group contract, or perhaps we co-construct a group contract together as a class. Um, the students could then post that group contract in the asynchronous discussion threads so that everyone in the class can see the group contracts and so that each individual member of the group might then post a response to that discussion thread indicating they've read and they agree to that particular group contract. I also look at um, the pre-instructional decisions around check-ins and how will I check in with students to make sure that they are on track and to support them through the challenges that we know occur when working with a group. It also helps me um, think about the feedback loops that I will provide and the ways in which I will help students with reflecting on their work throughout the process as well as at the end. So those are some of the things that I do to help prepare for working with groups in my classes.